Hey, what's up guys? I've got a special treat for you guys out there. What I have in this video is the new barrel kit from Disruptive Paintball. As some of you already know, I have been using um, their earlier version barrels that they had for about maybe, what, um, two and a half years now, give or take. And it still continues to be one of the quietest ones out there and have been really just fantastic barrels they've served me well they're lightweight they came in many different color options which i normally wouldn't get but they were having a closeout um about a year ago and i was able to buy the tips for five dollars and i just couldn't resist that sale it was just too good of a price for uh, brand new tips and i re already had the backs uh, but for the most part the main reason i bought these barrels or continue to use these barrels um, is because of the way they change the sound signature. Like I said before, um, I've tried quite a few barrels and these have been one of the quietest barrels out there. And that's basically one of the main reasons anybody would want to upgrade their barrel. Uh, one is for the sound signature and the other one is to be able to match their paint a little bit better because their stock barrels are just a little bit too big for the paint that they use at the local field. So here is my set. This is the first generation um, barrels from Disruptive. These are called the Balance Barrels. And I don't have the nice case that Disruptive provides, just like you saw earlier in the video, but I am using the, the die boom box uh, for these barrels um, when I do go play paintball. And it's basically enough to hold all the things that I would need to go out in the field. Um, I'm able to use the four backs that I have. Right now I have a 688, a 686, 682, and most recently a 678. Um, now before you say anything about the different types of finishes of the backs, that's what that's because I didn't get them all at once. I just started out with the two backs and when they had a sale I decided to pick up the 688 just in case I ever did play uh, at a field or used paint that was a little bit larger than 686 and you know just to keep that option to overbore and as far as the 678 the, the reason I got that was because I started playing pump and the, the field paint was still not as consistent as I would like and when I did use the 682 some fit very nicely with that back but some just rolled through um, so it wasn't really good for pump and I had to pick up the 678 now, with that being said, let's actually get to the barrels that are the focus of, of this video. Um, here we are. This is the Disruptive Second Generation Death Touch Barrels. Um, as you may already know, I have been looking forward to actually getting my hands on these new barrels. I've had such a wonderful experience with the first generation and that, and that I wanted to be able to see what they did in the second generation. Now I wish I could say that these barrels are mine, but unfortunately it's not. This is actually my buddy Tommy's uh, paintball barrels. He wanted to try out the disruptive as well and basically rub it in that he has the new generation barrels where I have the, the first generation. But anyway, I you know I'm fine with that I am satisfied with the first generation like I said before it's been great I have no problems with it and I plan on keeping it so that's the reason why I haven't resold them to just get the new generation so kudos to you Tommy for trying out these disruptive barrels I hope that you it serves you well just like the the other barrels have so served me too and also thank you very much for allowing me to hold on to these barrels for a little bit so that I can uh, just drool over them and also be able to make this video okay so the first thing is the case you get this case when you get the barrel kit and basically holds all the barrels that you could ever need with you on the field it has plenty of space inside um, it has 10 spots where you can hold your two-piece barrels in now in this kit he has four backs and two tips uh, the backs are 678, 682, 686, and 688. 
as far as the tips he chose to have the, the 13 inch and the 15 inch as well now one of the most obvious differences between the two generations um, is on the back itself you'll find the difference in threading in the back in the older generation you'll find it similar to many of the other barrels where you have the male end on one side and the female end on the other side but with this second generation they decided to put the two male ends on both sides of the backs which is similar to the new shaft barrels from Planet Eclipse and it's also re reverse threaded which is similar to the Planet Eclipse um, shaft barrels now as far as the reason on why they chose to do this design um, from what I've read it's more so of a failsafe in the event that somebody who's using this barrel dives and does um, a core sample it's not really going to bend the hole or ruin the back what's probably going to happen is it's going to snap off from the tip um, so that if that happens you just have to buy a new tip um, because the, the the threads on the back are preserved and you don't have to end up buying a whole new barrel front and a back and then you just save your money and hopefully you'll be able to just replace it by buying a new tip well that's the theory anyway and I don't plan on testing it myself I hope that never ever 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 happens to me while I'm out at the field another thing to note on their backs is that disruptive prides themselves on one of the longest bores in their backs now the previous generation I believe they had a a 7.5 inch inner bore whereas this new set they actually made it a little bit longer and you get a full 8 inch um, inner bore in your barrels now let's go on to the tip it's not really a difference between the two generations but I thought it important to note in this video as well in case somebody was looking to purchase this set now if you look closely at the the tip of the barrel you have channels and inside those channels are the porting now they did this for two reasons one of them is so that it helps in keeping the paint out of your porting when you're playing speedball and you're rubbing your the the tip on the bunker with paint and so instead of the paint getting into the barrels the I don't call it the the mounds or the mounds will kind of collect the paint and not allow it to get into the channels now the other reason is for playing in the rain um, one of the tips for playing in the rain and being able to maintain your accuracy is to tape the the tip of your barrels so that the the rain doesn't get into the porting and then get inside the barrel so what you'll do or what many players will do is they'll tape the tip and if it's a normal barrel of course the the porting also gets taped up but with these small inner channels there's still some space when you tape it up and the air is allowed to escape out through the porting and through the channel that is created when you tape up the barrel so it's not uh, as loud as a normal barrel so you still get to enjoy the the, the effects of the porting as well as keeping keeping it dry as best as you can and finally the weight um, according to the website I'm sorry I don't have a scale it's actually broken so I can't do it myself but the 15 inch is reported to be around a hundred grams and if you use the back with a 13 inch it's 95 grams now in terms of the sound signature and the difference between the two generations at first glance I don't see or I don't think there's going to be a significant difference or any difference at all um, the reason why is because they have the same amount of rows in porting they both have four rows of porting the same amount of holes almost the same if not the same size holes in in both tips so based on that it seems like it's going to be the same uh, I can't say that I've tested it mainly because I haven't um, these are not my barrels like I said before I haven't tested them out on the field um, so unless he gives me the green light to test them out on the field hint hint um, that's all I have to go by well that should be about it I think I've talked long enough 
And hopefully that was enough information for you out there that was considering getting um, a, a different barrel kit that this could be another option for you. Um, but before I do go, I just wanted to share something, especially to you pump players out there, something that was also ordered that I was not aware of that they had was a 676 one step, uh, one piece barrel. So I was definitely pleasantly surprised when I was unboxing these barrels and I saw the, the bore size of the 676 and I immediately thought about pump and being able to use that as well. Um, so that is something that's going to be in the back of my mind if I do find out that when I do go to the field that even my 678 is not sufficient enough for a pump. So that's going to be another option for me. Um, I don't think it's available yet for the two piece, but if you're just satisfied with the one piece, this is also something that can be considered. Okay, I'm serious this time. This is going to be the end of the video. Uh, so before I end the video again, I thank you for watching the videos and like always commenting, subscribing, uh, giving me some advice on the gameplay or if you enjoyed the music or the commentary. Um, thank you. And hopefully this video as well was entertaining as well as informational for you guys out there looking for a barrel kit. I know it's not one of the more popular barrel kits out there, which can be a good thing. If you're looking for a used set and you find this one, it should be a lot cheaper than finding, um, you know, the more popular sets out there. So, you know, it, you know, to each his own. So thank you again and happy balling.